Hi, this is Nanette Hosenfeld with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Tuesday, June 30th, 2015. Showers and thunderstorms will develop across much of the Great Basin this afternoon. However, the main fire potential impact over the next couple of days is dry air that will move into the Great Basin from the north beginning tomorrow. This dry air will advance southward through Friday. The main concern with this dry air is the increased potential for holdovers. Showers and thunderstorms developed across much of the Great Basin yesterday afternoon, and you can see from the precipitation map on the left uh, that some areas of the Great Basin did receive between a half of an inch and an inch of precipitation. However, the coverage was pretty spotty. Quite a bit of lightning was observed with these storms, and the greatest coverage of lightning was across southwestern Idaho. There was some new activity yesterday with the greatest number of fire starts across Utah. So as we've been talking about in the past few briefings, it, briefings it's been unusually hot. And here are some records that were set yesterday, um, some new temperature records. You can see that the highest record was in Mountain Home with a high temperature of 107, and many, many records set above 100 degrees. So it really has been unusually hot. This heat has been because of a high pressure system that's uh, sitting over the Great Basin and this is still in place although it will shift a bit westward over the next few days. With the hot and dry weather, fuels have continued to dry across the Great Basin. This afternoon temperatures will still be quite hot with many valley, valley locations seeing temperatures well into the 100 degree range. However, with the cold front moving into the Great Basin, temperatures will be a few degrees cooler than normal but still quite hot. As I mentioned earlier, showers and thunderstorms will develop across much of the Great Basin this afternoon, though coverage will shift a bit southward compared to what we saw yesterday. Uh, with really good moisture in place, most of these storms will be accompanied by wetting rain. Tomorrow, dry air begins to move into the Great Basin from the north, and you can see that as a result, thunderstorm coverage shifts southwards. Maximum temperatures will still cool a few degrees. On Thursday, that dry air continues to advance southward, and as a result, those showers and thunderstorms continue to move southward as well. By Thursday afternoon, relative humidities will be well into the critical range across much of the northern part of the Great Basin. On Friday and Saturday, that dry air continues to advance southward. However, on Sunday and Monday, we will see some increased moisture, which will lead to increased coverage of showers and thunderstorms across the Great Basin. ERCs continue to gradually rise across the Great Basin, and you can see the point map on the right shows most of the raw stations above the 50th percentile. As far as fuel conditions, I thought it was interesting that across eastern Nevada, many stations are actually rising as far as fuel moisture. Uh, you can see the Duck Creek site, that's the chart in the middle, has been rising over the past few weeks. Um, and they are above normal for the time of year. However, across much of the rest of the Great Basin, fuel moistures are on the decline and are at or below normal. The Climate Prediction Center calls for air temperatures above average across much of the Great Basin and precipitation above average for the 8 to 14 day period. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Our contact information is on the screen and you can also find us on Twitter. Thanks.